Continuing on, um, number six, consider the expression, the inverse of f of x. How do we read this? We read it as the inverse of f of x. So what we want to avoid is we don't want to treat this as an exponent. This is not an exponent. It's a symbol for the inverse of f of x. It does not mean 1 over f of x. So this is a false. Consider the expression to answer the following, log base 4 of 16. How do we read this? We read this as log base 4 of 16. Without using the word log, state what you ask yourself when simplifying the above expression. We ask ourselves 4 to what exponent or power, either way, is 16. Okay, that's what that means. 4 to what exponent, L-O-G, would be better if it was called E-X-P. 4 to what exponent gives us 16. Okay, simplify the expression. Well, 4 to what exponent is 16? 4 to the second power is 16. So x is 2. So in other words, log base 4 of 16 simplifies to 2. You don't have to show any work. You could just write 2. Okay. On the same coordinate graph, plane, coordinate plane graph y equals 5 to the x and log base 5 of x. Label each graph, label the axis of symmetry. Well, since the, these two functions are inverses of each other, the axis of symmetry is the line y equals x. So that's this line, where x and y are equal to each other. Okay. So the first one, 5 to the x, here we'll do an xy chart over here. So when x is 0, 5 to the 0 is 1. So that's our y-intercept. When x is 1, 5 to the 1 is 5. When x is 2, 5 to the second power is 25. Then when we have change it to negative 1, 5 to the negative 1 is the same as 1 over 5. So we're going to get the reciprocal values of the, the positive ones. 5 to the negative 2 is 1 over 5 to the positive 2, which is 1 over 25. So we have a y-intercept at 1. When x is 1, y is 5. And when x is 2, y is 25. That's like way up there. Then 1 over 5 for negative 1 is way down here. And 1 for negative 2, 1 over 25 is here. As x gets more and more negative as we get a larger negative number for x y gets closer and closer to zero for example one over a hundred is very close to zero so that's our horizontal asymptote at y equals zero and let's just do this again um we get it's an exponential growth graph. Oh gosh, that looks not too pretty. Let's uh, try it again. It's easier on paper rather than on computer. But we have one and five. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're just sketching the graph. But you should have your y-intercepts accurately, your x and y-intercepts accurately, and the um, asymptote. Okay, now we're going to, so this we're going to label as y equals log base 5. I'm sorry, y equals 5 to the x. And then we're going to graph the log. So this is y equals 5 to the x exponential growth. Now, to graph the log, all we do is just interchange these values. So, this is x, this is y equals log base 5 of x. So, when x is 1, y is 0. When x is 5, y is 1. When x is 25, y is 2. I'm just interchanging these values. When x is 1 fifth, y is negative 1. 
and so on. In other words, we're saying to ourselves, 5 to what exponent gives us 1, for example. Okay, well, 5 to the 0 gives us 1. Okay, and so on. Um, let's try this again. Okay, that, that's better. Okay, and we're going to get these values. When x is anything between 1, between 0 and 1, we're going to get large negative numbers. For example, as you see here, for 1 fifth, we get negative 1. For 1 over 25, we get um, negative 2. Oh, I just realized I made a mistake. This should be negative 2. Okay, so this is negative 2. And when x is 1 over 125, y is negative 3, and so on. Okay, so that's a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. And at 5, we have a we have 1. So as you see, the graph is reflected on the line y equals x. We'll label that in a minute. So this is log base 5 of x. And this is y equals x. Now to answer the questions for um, domain, the domain is all the possible x values for the function y equals 5 to the x. Any x value is possible. So that's from negative infinity to infinity or all real numbers. Either of those is acceptable. This is interval notation. For range, those are all the possible y values. As you see, our graph never goes below the x axis and it's never it never is zero, even though it comes very close to it. So it's it's all the y values that are greater than zero. Or you could say from zero to infinity. This is interval notation. Let me erase this and make it a little prettier. So y is greater than zero. The x-intercept, we don't have an x-intercept. It never crosses the x-axis, so that's none. y-intercept is at 1, so that's y equals 1, or you could put 0 comma 1. Horizontal asymptote right here, the, the x-axis is a horizontal asymptote, so it's y equals 0. Vertical asymptote, it doesn't have any. Um, this function actually, even though it looks like it's vertically um, um, that it has an asymptote vertically, it doesn't because, like for example, at five, it's 125, and so on. So, it's not um, straightening out vertically. So, vertical asymptote, it's none. And then for the inverse function, which is log log of five, log base five of x, everything switches. All of these answers switch. All the x and y values switch. The domain and range switch. Here, the domain is x equals 0, or from 0 to infinity. The range is all real numbers, or negative infinity to infinity. The x-intercept is at x equals 1, as you can see. And the y-intercept is none. It never crosses the y-axis. Horizontal asymptote, it doesn't have any. Even though it looks like it does, it doesn't. It keeps going higher and higher. And vertical asymptote is at x equals 0, the vertical line, um, which is the uh, y-axis. And that happens with any graphs of it, any two pairs of inverse functions, the scenario of the switching of the domain and range and asymptotes, if they have any, and so on.